Hi, and congratulations on the purchase of your beautiful new Rogue SL. This is an amazing vehicle. It's one of the best in the industry, especially in its class. Safety is top notch. I know we covered a lot during the delivery on this. There is a lot of features to go over on this. So I hope this video helps refresh your memory and answer any questions that you might have. At the end of it, if you still have any questions or anything else that you'd like to discuss, please feel free to call, text, or email me as my contact info will follow. Let's have a look at the features on this amazing vehicle. All right, we're gonna start right here at the steering wheel on this beautiful D-shaped sport wheel. On the right side here, we've got our cruise control. Now, there's two different modes to the cruise control. Up on the top here, if I press the cruise control, it sets it and we see a car with a line underneath it. That's your intuitive cruise control. From there, I can use this button here to set a distance of one, two, or three car lengths. Once I am within the distance of one, two, or three car lengths, whatever I have set, of the vehicle in front of me, it's going to readjust my speed. So if I've got my cruise set for 100 and the vehicle in front of me is doing 90 as I'm approaching it, if I don't have an opportunity to get around it, it's going to readjust my speed down to 90, even though my cruise will still say 100. The moment that that vehicle moves out of the way or I can get around it, it's going to bring my speed back up to 100. Now, if I don't want the intuitive cruise control, if I prefer to use regular, I can just press and hold that cruise control button and it changes from a car with a line to a regular cruise control dial. There is no more distance settings, so the intuitive cruise control is no longer set. We also have here our Bluetooth, so this will allow me to answer calls or hang up calls. And then we have our voice recognition. The voice recognition will access your phone so that you can tell it what to do, or if need be, it can access the navigation so that you can set a destination while driving, as when you're driving, a lot of the options gray out on the navigation. We'll go over that shortly. It will also allow you to change the audio using your voice as well. Over on the left side of the steering wheel, we have our volume for our radio. These two buttons that look like fast forward and rewind buttons will actually skip through the presets on your radio if you're on FM, AM, or on satellite radio, which comes free for the first three months. FM has 12 presets and XM, which is your satellite, has 18 presets. And it will bounce back and forth amongst them. This button here, the OK button with the arrows around it and our back button pertains to our driver assist display. So on the driver assist display, right now we see fuel economy one. If I press up or down, I get to fuel economy two. If I press the OK, then I can reset everything. So I've got to cancel. I can reset my fuel economy or I can reset all. And right below that, I see that that pertains to trip, average speed, and fuel economy. If I reset it for all, it's going to reset it for all three. And when I change one, it will correspond for all three. Our next screen over shows a compass. This is pertaining to your navigation. It'll show you what direction you're going at all time. However, if you have your navigation system engaged, it is going to show you an arrow either going to the left or right for an upcoming turn that you have for whichever direction you're going next. And the distance will count down as you get closer to your destination. The navigation system is also going to talk to you and give you verbally those same directions. Our next screen over shows what's going on in the radio. So again, if I hit those fast forward or rewind looking buttons, I can see it goes through my presets on the radio here. OK so equals source. So right now I'm on FM. If I press OK, it's going to go to satellite. Again, goes to Bluetooth and then auxiliary, AM, back to FM. Now, if I've got a device plugged into my USB, that becomes an option. The same as if I've got a CD in, that also becomes an option. This screen is for your intuitive cruise control. So from here, I can set a distance once the cruise is on. Right now, by default, it's at three car lengths. I can reduce that to two car lengths or one car length. Our next screen over shows our safety shield. So this is related to the, the automatic emergency braking in the front. So the way that that works is if you close the distance too fast between you and the vehicle in front of you, whether it's a parked car or they hit the brakes, couple things are going to happen. It's going to beep at you inside the vehicle. It's also going to push the gas pedal back against your foot. Now in doing so, 
what it does there and you see I just turned the sounds on for these features I'll show you the button for that in a moment when the gas pedal pushes back against your foot and it beeps it gives you anywhere from a half a second to two or three seconds to react on your own depending on how close you are to the vehicle if you don't react it's going to react for you the beeping will get faster and louder and it's going to apply the brakes to avoid the oncoming collision otherwise you do have a couple seconds on your own to react either by braking or going around the vehicle in front of you also we have our blind spot indicator so there is an indicator on each of the A-frame pillars on each side for blind spot detection. So whether you're passing a vehicle or it's passing you, if there's a vehicle in your blind spot, it's going to show up in that spot there. The indicator will light up a dull orange. From there, while that indicator is on, so let's say hypothetically your driver's side indicator is on and you signal to go left. When doing so, that indicator is going to start flashing and it's going to beep at you inside the vehicle to let you know you do have a vehicle in your blind spot. Our next screen over shows tire pressure. Now as we see it says will appear while driving. So once we start driving it will show you the individual pressure for all four tires. Should you get a low tire, it is going to come up with a warning indicator just to let you know that you do have a low tire. From there, it will show you exactly which tire it is and what the pressure is. When you go to fill that tire up, simply put the hose on the stem of your tire and start filling the air. When it gets to the low pressure, the low uh, indicator to say that you're good, the horn will beep once. If you continue to put air in, when it reaches the high limit, the horn will beep three times. You do need to stop at that point or you risk ruining your tires. Our next screen over shows your intuitive all-wheel drive. So this will show whether you're in front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. You are going to drive in front-wheel drive about 95% of the time. However, whether you're going up a large hill and need the extra power, or you run into any traction conditions like hydroplaning, slippery roads, loose gravel, whatever the case may be, this will show you when you go to all-wheel drive. And what's going to happen is that top line indicator is going to drop down to 50% and the bottom line is going to jump up to 50%. That shows you when you're in all-wheel drive. Once you get past those conditions, it's still going to drop down to front-wheel drive. It will do that automatically all the way up to 145 kilometers per hour, which is an industry leader. Now, I will go over the all-wheel drive lock button with you guys in a few minutes. Our next screen here shows any warnings. So, anything at all whether it's low wiper fluid a door that's not shut whatever the condition may be it will give you a warning initially when it happens you can make that warning go away simply by pressing the OK button or the back button it will leave a yellow triangle with an indicator up here an exclamation mark you can come back to this screen to see what the warning is especially if there's multiple warnings to get rid of it simply correct the issue so if you've got low wiper fluid add some wiper fluid and the warning will go away on its own our last screen here is our settings screen. So there's a lot of settings in here. The clock needs to be set over from the audio system. However, the only setting I typically change in here, and I do want to show you as I mentioned to you when you got your vehicle, is how the vehicle automatically unlocks. By default, Nissan vehicles automatically unlock the vehicle when you turn the engine off. Most people prefer that it automatically unlocks the moment you shift into park. So we're going to go into vehicle settings down to locking, auto door unlock, and shift to park. So now the moment we shift into park, the vehicle is automatically going to unlock. So I don't need to worry about putting in the park and then letting my passenger out. If I press the back button a couple times, I'm back to the main settings screen. I highly recommend that you check out the different settings that are on this vehicle. Don't be worried about messing anything up. Now that you know how to change your parking, there is a factory reset button to change everything right back to where it was should you get things where you don't want them to be and can't remember how to fix it. Next up, we're going to have a look at some of the buttons down on the left side of the dash. So down here on the dash, we've got several buttons. We've got our traction control. Now, I highly recommend just leaving the traction control alone. This will allow your wheels to spin a little bit faster, especially in the snow. However, the vehicle does tend to slide from side to side. It is safer to leave the traction control on unless you're familiar with how to drive with it off. So I highly recommend just leaving it alone. This is our sounds for our safety features. So that automatic emergency braking and the blind spot detection that I talked about. You also have lane drift detection in this. 
any of those things that engage are going to make a sound. It's going to beep inside the vehicle. This will allow you to turn the sounds on and off. We have a button here for our tailgate. So where you do have a power lift gate on it, simply hold this button for two to three seconds. You'll hear it beep and then the back tailgate will open. You can close it the exact same way. We've got our gas release right here, which is on the passenger side of the vehicle. Down the bottom here, we have a heated leather wrapped steering wheel and this turns on the heat to it. Our all wheel drive lock is here. Now I mentioned this already. With the all wheel drive lock, you can lock in all wheel drive up to 40 kilometers per hour. After that, it's gonna kick off the lock. Sport mode will change how your motor reacts. It's gonna give you a little more responsiveness from your motor. It's also gonna bump your RPMs up. If you need to get around somebody in a hurry, if you're running at a passing room, sport mode will allow you to do that as the vehicle will be a little more responsive. I don't recommend driving in sport mode on a regular basis though, as it is hard on gas. With that said, we do have an eco mode here. Eco mode is gonna make your vehicle better on gas. You can drive in eco mode on a regular basis Two things to be aware of. One, pulling away from a dead stop, and two, trying to get around somebody in a hurry. The vehicle is going to feel a little bit sluggish in response time compared to regular mode or sport mode. So to know whether you're in sport, eco, or regular mode, if I look at our park indicator right here, right now it's blank below it. That means that we're in regular mode. If I hit sport, it shows up in brown and says sport. If I hit eco, it says eco down below there and it's in green and we notice our fuel economy screen up above changes from regular to eco it stays the same on sport mode over on the side of our door here we do have memory seats for this so what you're going to want to do is find the perfect spot for where you like your seat set and where your mirrors are all good your side mirrors and from there you're going to hit set and then your number whether you're driver one or driver two and then from then on out, all you have to do is just hit your button and it's gonna reset everything for you. Now, neat little feature on this. We see our mirror and our mirror switch here. I can set my mirrors here simply by hitting left for the driver's side mirror, or right for the passenger mirror. You're gonna to wanna to put it back to the center when you're done to avoid accidentally moving your mirrors. However, if I move this to either side and I put the vehicle in reverse, I notice that my mirrors tilt down so that I can actually see the lines on the ground if I'm backing into a spot. It's a pretty neat feature that only works when this is either to the left or right. Next up, we're going to have a look at our center display and a lot of the features that go with it. So as we move over here, we see we've got a lot of features going on here. Right away, we see we've got a navigation system, which is really nice. So I can hit the map button at any point to get to this screen. From there, I can go through and I can set a destination. If you are going to set a home destination, I highly recommend setting something close to home. Heaven forbid somebody steals your vehicle, you don't want them coming right back to your own house with that vehicle to try and get into your house. So I typically set it for a landmark close to my house that I know I can easily get to from there. That way if I'm out of town and I need to come home, it's going to take me close there and then I'm good the rest of the way. You can set the exact street address that you're going to. You can look up points of interest, previous destinations for anything that you've already entered in. Same for work. You've got an address book that you can set stuff. All kinds of options here. So I'm going to go back here. If I hit audio, it allows me to see what's going on. So I see I've got AM, FM, satellite or Bluetooth, USB, Auxiliary and CDs are options if there's stuff connected there as well. Lots of options for your radio. You can also change the source up here to any one of those and we see all the options there. Now, the backup camera on this comes with a 360 degree round view monitor. So, the moment I put it in reverse, I see my backup and I see all the way around the vehicle. That view over here is utilized by using the backup camera a camera in the front grille, as well as cameras underneath each of your side mirrors. Now on this side here, we've got some distance hash marks. As long as you stop by these red hash marks, it gives you room to open your tailgate safely. If you come any closer than that, you run the risk of hitting whatever's behind the vehicle. 
Now if you are parking and you need to get in really nice and tight, this is your bumper across the back here. So you can get in as tight as your bumper. Now if I hit the camera button, it changes my view over here so that I can see down the side of the vehicle. One more gives me strictly a back view and then we're back to our regular mode. We're going to turn the camera back off. Down below here we've got our dual climate control. So this is a great feature especially if you've got a passenger in the vehicle with you who likes a different temperature. If that's the case simply push the dual button and they can change their temperature to whatever works for them. Once they get out push the dual button and everything resets to the driver's side of the cabin. Now, our rear defrost will also activate the heated side mirrors. Auto, when it's on auto, is going to do whatever it has to to get the cabin temperature to the temperature that you've got set here. So on a day like today where it is a beautiful 16 degrees outside and it's a little bit warm inside the vehicle, when I initially turned it on, that fan dialed up quite a bit and it was cold air that was coming out. As it got closer to the cabin temperature, it dialed the fan back and then took us back to here. A neat feature related to your dual climate control that I want to go over is the intelligent climate control. So with this vehicle, if we look at our key fob here, we've got our panic button. There is a trunk release. Hold for two seconds and it will open or close the trunk. We've got keyless entry into the vehicle and you've got factory remote start. To use your factory remote start, simply hit the lock button and hold this top button for five seconds and it will, re it will start your vehicle from 150 to 200 feet away. When it does that with the intelligent climate control, during the winter, if it's below three degrees Celsius outside and your motor is cold, when you remote start your vehicle, it's automatically gonna put all the air onto the windshield of the vehicle to help clear it off. It's also automatically going to turn on the rear defrost, which as we mentioned also activates the heated side mirrors and it will automatically engage the heated steering wheel. Also, if you leave your heated seats in an on position when you turn the vehicle off last, it will also start to warm up your heated seats for you. So it's a beautiful feature to go with the intelligent climate control. In the summer if you use it, it's going to do what it can to get the cabin temperature down to where it needs to be. Down below here we see a USB port. Now with this you can either use this to charge a phone or we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in this vehicle. I'm going to go over the feature and how to use it in a few minutes but this will allow you full access to that. And to do that you need to connect your device with the cord. If you have Android phone you need to download the Android Auto app. If you have an Apple phone it just automatically engages it. You're just going to want to make sure that it's enabled both in your vehicle and on your phone. To enable it in the vehicle, we go into the settings. So from in the settings here, we have a lot of different options. We have connections, so I can connect Bluetooth. To update your maps, it's going to update via Wi-Fi. So if you're close enough to your house to get a Wi-Fi connection, simply go into the connections and then Wi-Fi. You're going to pick one of the Wi-Fi devices, enter in your password, and a few times a year it's automatically going to update your navigation system for you using that. We've got navigation settings in here, sound settings, however where I want to come in here is I want to show you a few of the different features that go on, are going on over here. I come over to Nissan Connect Services, shows me what's going on there. We've got some settings here, voice settings, camera settings, all kinds of settings going on. You can also customize your home menu from here. So you can display your home menu, which shows up right now like this, right from the settings screen. Your clock is also done in here. So when I come in here, I see my clock has the correct time on it at the moment. We're in auto mode, 12 hour format, it's on screen. I'm gonna go down, everything is good. Now, if I needed to change it, I can go in and I can set my date from here. If I set it for time zone, I come down here. Now, I'm going to set this for Atlantic. 
and right away we see it jumps back an hour. So I'm going to come back one screen and we're going to turn daylight savings time on. So from here, this is the only thing that you'll need to adjust for your clock as we hit daylight savings on and off. You're just going to turn that button on or off. Very simple to use. There is a back button up here which I've been using. There's also one over here which will take me back as well. So all kinds of ways to go through and access everything. And then you have a full menu of buttons down below here. And it is a full touch screen display. All right, so we're going to have a look at the Android Auto here. To work the Android Auto, you need to connect via a USB cord down below here, right to your phone. You need to have the Android Auto app installed, which you can get from the Google Play Store. It is a free device, a free app. From here, once that we're connected, we can hit the button down here for directions. It launches Google Maps. Makes your car pretty much act like a navigation system at that point. Just be aware it is going to use a little bit of your data, but not much. To get back out of here, we can simply hit this button here. We can access our phone right from here. As it does disconnect your uh, Bluetooth hands-free. And then over here, we've got music. Give us a full list of any music that we want to listen to. Or we can head back out of the app right by this button here. So when I hit this and then press our button, it takes us back out of Android Auto. And that's as simple as Android Auto is. All right, we're gonna have a look at Apple CarPlay now. This is a little bit different than Android Auto. You don't need an app on your phone to work this. Once you connect your iPhone to the system, again, using the cord to do so, this is the screen that pops up. So very much like the Android Auto, the biggest feature here that you're probably gonna use is our maps. So with this, it's gonna give you the same feel as a navigation system in the vehicle. It does use a little bit of data. It's not bad on your data, but please be aware that it does use that. And again, like the Android Auto, it disables the Bluetooth hands-free. So your phone, you still have the option here and you still answer it right from the steering wheel, but it is all through the cord on your phone for this. You've also got access to your music, any podcasts that you might have on here, audio books, messaging, and WhatsApp. And then that gives you a good view of the Apple CarPlay. So a couple of final features to go over. With our key fob, we do have an intelligent key system. So how that works is there is a button on the outside handle of your two front doors. As long as you have the key on you, so it needs to be within about three or four feet. If it's on you in your pocket or whatever the case may be, you can simply walk up and push the button on your handle once to unlock the door that you're at. Push it a second time to unlock the entire vehicle. Once everybody's out of the vehicle and all doors are shut, one push of that button will lock the vehicle as well. Now because you have a key fob, eventually the battery in that will die. They're usually good for about two to four years. When you hit the point that it does die, on the back here there is a little switch which will allow you access to a key. There is a keyhole in the driver's side door to allow you to get into the vehicle. Once you're in, if the key fob is dead, you're simply going to put the Nissan emblem on the key fob directly against the button and use that to push the button in. Now you should know long before it dies because your first indication that your battery is getting low is up here it will say incorrect key ID when you go to start the vehicle. That's your indication that you're really going to want to get that battery changed soon. We can do it here at the dealership or you can buy one of the batteries on your own to change it. They're not expensive. Up top we have an absolutely stunning panoramic moonroof. Now we have a button for this right here. It does come with a shade that will fully cover this entire area or I can stop it anywhere along the way. While that shade is open, if I simply push up on the button, it will tilt my sunroof portion so that I get a vent. I can vent the hot air out. If I push it again, it closes it. If I pull back on it, it will retract that and I can stop it anywhere along the way. Simply pushing forward will close it off again. Now this button takes a little bit of getting used to because if I'm not used to it, for example, I push forward, there's two clicks that I just felt as soon as that closes, it starts to retract the, stream, the screen to close it. So I'm going to open that back up and just leave it there. 
That is an absolutely amazing feature. We've also got an SOS button here which connects to your Nissan Connect services. Nissan Connect is a subscription based service that you can subscribe to. Uh, while you do, the SOS will connect you to Nissan Emergency Services. They will ask what the nature of the emergency is and connect you to local emergency services as needed. Alright, we're going to hop outside the vehicle in just a moment and go over how to use the power lift gate and the kick motion activation to go with it. So in the back of our vehicle here we have our power lift gate. Now as I mentioned we can use the key fob and hold this for two seconds. It beeps three times to tell us to move out of the way and it will open and close the power lift gate. Now inside we have our tunnel cover. Simply pull this back and connect into the side pieces and it will stay open. Now rather than try and fiddle with this and try and push it back in place if you simply lift up and let go it will put it securely back in place. Now for the kick motion activation you can use it to open or close the vehicle. So under the center of the vehicle we see a little mark here on each side. We're going to do a fluid kick in and out. We hear that same beeping and the power lift gate closes. If you hesitate with your foot and hold it under there or wave it from side to side it will not work. It needs to be a fluid in and out motion as such and away it goes. That will only work if the key is within three or four feet of the door. So it's the same as the intelligent key system. Now if you don't want to use that we do have a button up here to close it or to open it up in the handle here simply push this button and that will open it all the way up for you that or you can use the key fob or the button inside so there's no shortage of ways to open and close this congratulations again on the purchase of your beautiful new rogue sl this is an amazing vehicle the comfort in this is absolutely amazing second to none the drive on it is beautiful and it is super feature rich if you have any other questions I hope that this has answered all of them, but if you do have any other questions, please feel free to contact me via text, email, or phone. I'm more than happy to answer anything that I can for you or talk about your vehicle a little more. I look forward to seeing you when you come back. When you're in for service, please stop by and say hello. I'd love to see how you're doing and continue the journey that we're on. I know that I've done everything that I can to make this a great experience for you, and I wanna help continue that experience even while you're dealing with service.